What are you doing, Turbo? Hey, Kitson, where are you going? You got somewhere to be? What are you doing? You just hanging out? Children on the love seat? You make this love seat look very tiny. I mean, it is pretty tiny. It's not very big. Hey, you doing, Turbo? You tell everybody hi? Why are you? You look like you did something. What did you do? Turbo, what did you do? Uh huh. Hey, you didn't do anything, did you? You're a good boy. Oh. Here's Pumpkin. I was wondering, all the animals, everybody's hanging out in the office. Hey, what's up, card and friends? Jeffrey, how's everybody? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Don't normally start videos up here. I was looking for the animals. I saw Chocobo hanging out in the love seat, which was an odd spot for him. Pumpkin's up here. I assume enjoying the nature channel. Here's a view y'all don't get very often. Here's a garden from above. Look how big that Queen Pum's gotten. Thing's a beast. My voice is a little hoarse. I've been filming for winter. I got seven videos filmed yesterday. It was just like eight hours of talking. So just going to push through that. Chances are go outside, have some tea or something. And that'll help relax the vocal cords. I don't really have anything planned for right now. We're just hanging out and enjoying the garden. But y'all know how that goes. We'll go outside, walk around, and I'll see plenty of things that need to be already. So look at that. Look at how, why are you so thirsty? Come on. Well, I haven't watered in like a week, so that might have something to do with it, right, Pumpkin? Plants need water. It's part of it. It had been raining. Didn't need to. Had the bands from the hurricane blow through, and that kept things pretty wet for a few days. On that note, hope everybody's okay. I know a lot of y'all are in Florida and down south and in some of those rough areas. Hope everybody's safe. Okay, Pumpkin, I'm going to go outside. It's too nice of a day to hang out in here. I'm going to see you later, okay? Okay, Pumpkin? You're such a sweetheart. Such a sweet Pumpkin. Yeah. Oh, did you hear me say the thing about going outdoors? Did you hear me say that? Yes. Yes, I did. I cut a hole in my desk and put a cat tunnel on it. It's fun. The cats like to go in there and they like to hang out. I hear them running around and playing inside the crinkle tube. I never use this. It's for a giant monitor. Or not monitor. You know, a PC. And I use the laptop. It gets everything done. And actually, <laughs> with the way that they're building things these days, I don't think I'd have a PC inside that cabinet anyways and want it out in the open because they get too hot. I have a neat plant over here. It's aquatic, but I'm still going to show it to you. See that leaf? That one's cool. Look at that one. Isn't that beautiful? It's a Varking Anubius. Very slow grower as the Anubius go. It's just put out two little leaves recently. It's so, so, so pretty. It's got green and white and cream variegation on it. Been sturdy. Anubius, if you don't know. Epithetic aquatic plant. You can grow them outside the water, but the air needs to be wet. So it's something for a closed terrarium with tons of humidity. Yeah, they're they're sturdy. They last a long time. And the fish are saying hello. Hi, fish. What are you good boy? You waiting permission? You waiting permission? Okay. All right. Come on. Come on. Oh, big jump. You trying to knock my ass down the stairs. That could have been dangerous, Turbo. Pumpkin? You got me? Okay, there she goes. God, I cannot wait to get new carpet. So gross. It was just cleaned not long ago. <coughs> but, you know, it's old. I'd be able to breathe easier once that's gone, too. Should I thin the cannas out? There's not really much points this time of year other than it'd be nice to have the view back. It's not really necessary, but it's been bugging me. Okay, you ready? I know you're ready. You've been so patient. Took a while to get around this morning. There you go, Turbs. Some freedom, some freedom. Oh, kind of cold outside. Wasn't expecting that. Oh, you can see it on the heliconias. See those cupped up leaves? That's something they do when it's been cool. I'm gonna need to water, so you're gonna have to snap out of it. That's gonna rot and die. It's the fun heliconias. This time of year, there's like a two to three period in October where they will just decline. You don't stay on top of watering them. I forgot that all this was happening out here yesterday. I have their projects all over the place out here right now. I told y'all, eight hours of filming yesterday. So there's just all kinds of things happening. Such a good boy. I know what you want to do. Go ahead. You're free. You're free. Go ahead. Go swim. You can do it. There you go. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have kept talking. It threw you off. Go ahead and go swim. Go swim. Good boy. There you go. Why well, you'd want to get in there when it's 65 degrees outside. It is chilly. And ooh, 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 ooh. Been wanting to do this for such an incredibly long time, but you know, you got to wait for them to yellow out so that you know the plant has got, there's still a little bit of green in there. I should probably wait. I can't. I'm tired of it. I've been looking at this ugly frond 
for such a long time. Oh, that's better. That's so much better. Okay, maybe being a bit dramatic there, but you know, these Gassia palms, I love them. I talked about this in the garden tour. They just, they hold on to their foliage for a really long time, which is great, except that with that really slow snail-like growth, their winter fronds, meaning the ones that they hold on to when they're in a grow space over the winter time, um, they just look like crap for months on end because, like I said, they hold on to them for a really long time. So it takes them a long time to push out new fronds so the old fronds hang on for a long time. So like this one right here, hate it. That one right there, hate it. But it's not so bad because they haven't started to yellow up yet. That one started to yellow up like two weeks ago and it's just been hanging there and driving me crazy. I have an orchid back here that could use a repot. I know people don't always get excited about the orchid stuff, so I won't go on about it for too terribly long. Excuse you, why are you stuck? Let go, here we go. So, nice orchid, it's an Epidendron radicans. I don't remember the name on it, but it's a type that has a pink and yellow flower. Really simple and easy to grow orchid. The only problem I've had with it is that it just, it's just, it's too top heavy, right? I'm pretty sure whoever I got this from just sent me a bunch of cuttings shoved into a pot. You can see like there's this one right here that has loosened itself up and it's just, you know, look at that. Clearly that's not rooted into anything. Oh, I see a tag in case you want to know. Well, the problem is I can't let go of it or the whole thing's going to fall over. Are we going to do this? Are we going to do this? And oh, it's a Vici. Yeah, the Vici. Uh, beautiful orchid. These are fantastic. Wonderful for beginners. They like a lot of sun and they uh, don't need a ton of water. They're not really all that thirsty. And because of that, I think they're just a nice orchid. You don't have to worry about the lighting as much with them and you can water them to your heart's desire as long as you have them in the right potting medium. So I think what I'm going to do with this, well, I, for now, just lay that down, <laughs> right? That was getting to be too much. It's getting chaotic. I have a pot here that I've had for a long time. It's not an orchid pot. It's just a pot that I drilled a bunch of holes in. I think that that yeah, that should be able to hold this upright. Main thing is, is it going to stay up on its own when I have planting media in there? No, this is, uh, this is driving me crazy. The radican epidendrons, they're, they get tall. You know, they'll go a couple feet, maybe even three feet. I've seen them, they get really big. They sprawl all over the place, grow like weeds down south. And uh, until they reach a certain size, they're harder to containerize because all they want to do is freaking fall over all the time. You practically have to plant them up with a brick or something. So I guess I can do this. This should work. The pot's not going to tip over. So that's something. Just need to figure out how to keep it upright and then get it potted up in there. I'm getting low on stakes, but I don't see a way to pull this off without having a whole lot of stakes inside of this container. And the potting media for an epidendron radican, specifically the radicans, this is a Vichy's. It's fine, it's gonna be the same difference. They're a more terrestrial type, the semi-terrestrial. It's, it's, here's what I'm working with here. So this is more of a bromeliad type blend. It's orchid bark, lots of perlite, good amount of sand, it's gritty. It's gonna drain well, it's not gonna hold on to too much moisture, but it's going to have the heft that I need to keep this orchid from falling apart all the time, from toppling over. I think it'll root out better into it. If you live in a really humid climate, then this may not be the best thing for you. You wanna bulk it up with some more chunk, get some more orchid bark into it. Like I said, I think for this guy, this should be fine only because the winters are so incredibly dry. And it does feel like it, yeah, it's definitely attached its roots to the side of that plastic pot. We'll find packing peanuts. Love those. Get the packing peanuts out of there. And I am actually, <laughs> because I'm just I'm a little bit lazy and I did want a little bit more bark, I'm going to go ahead and toss that in there <laughs> into the old bucket right here. Pull that packing peanut out. Blend that in and get this guy potted up. Yeah, and you can see in here, that thing, it was hardly rooted in there. It had rooted to the sides of the container but the actual root mass on this is like nothing, right? And this is just cuttings shoved into a pot. That's all that this was. 
and that's okay, I suppose. I mean, not really, because it's not what we paid for, but here we are. Sometimes that's how people do things. When they're selling plants, you end up just getting cuttings, but it's a good amount of cutting, so I don't feel like I was ripped off or anything like that. So this is, I should say this, this is not a blend I would use for most orchids, right? Only specifically ones that are terrestrial to semi-terrestrial, and it does need a good amount of airflow. That's why there's so much chunk and heft in here. There are going to be people who are like, Jeff, you shouldn't do that. You should just be using orchid bark, and I completely disagree. I always have the best luck with the, well, radicans and Vici epidendrums when I have some core in there, whether that's coconut core or I guess peat moss, that would be the other thing. It's not even core, just because the winters here are so incredibly dry that needs something else. And sphagum is great, but it just doesn't get the job done. And it certainly doesn't provide the stability that I want for something like this, unless it's <laughs> like really, really pecked in there. It's usually, it's usually too much to have it pecked in <laughs> to that kind of an extreme. It was a bit much as far as the soil goes, but it's okay. Other nice thing about this being a nice, light, fluffy mix that's going to dry quickly is I can pack it up higher than I would on other things. You know, some plants you have to worry about your planting depth. But with these, they'll root pretty much all along that stem. So you don't need to worry about overdoing it. I'm going to go with more is more in this situation just because it's gonna well I'm gonna lose some soil basically there's holes in the sides of this container and that's just what happens when you're using a blend that has soil in it in a container that has holes I don't know why I had so much trouble getting that out oh hey are you gonna stand up on your own I'm not gonna count on that I don't think that's gonna last long I'm gonna try and find some stakes I'm gonna need to put like three of them around here and build a cage yeah I feel like the, <laughs> the slightest breeze this thing's gone Okay, no, I looked around for a while, didn't see anything, so I'm just going to rely on the umbrella pole here like I have been for the last couple weeks to help hold this guy in place. You may notice all these white roots coming off the sides. Those are all the aerial roots. They'll produce aerial roots all the way along their growth in between all the nodes, which is fun because it makes them really easy to propagate. I could take a single one of these growths off of here and everywhere there's an aerial root, make a cut on each side. You're gonna have a new plant, so they're fun. They spread quickly. You can, ow, that was a harsh sound for the rock on the table. You can share them with people, give them away. Like I said, as far as the orchids are concerned, it's a very, very, very easy one, specifically the radicans though. So if you type in epidendron orchid, you wanna make sure it's a radicans. And then there are lots of different variants on the radicans with different flower colors. And, somewhat different growth habits for the most part. Like I said, this one's the VGI, has pink flowers. Already talked about that. They're fun, I like them a lot. Now, that that's done, I'm glad that's done. It's something else I'm gonna check off my list, so I do just need to find some stakes for it. Ah, I have a rubber plant that needs to be repotted, but I don't, <laughs> I don't really feel like it right now. <laughs> See, I brought it out here a few days ago to let it experience some rain and some nice weather have another look at it. The rubber plants, I've been keeping them inside the grow space all summer because they had mealybugs on them, but they're pretty much all off of them at this point. I don't know. I actually don't know if this needs a repot. I mean, look at the size of that container. And I haven't been having trouble keeping it hydrated. So I think I might be jumping the gun on this one. Still some mealies in there. Really shouldn't have brought it out. Should have paid closer attention to that before bringing it out anyway. It's actually done a good amount of growing, so maybe I should just leave it. It's not root bound, it's not bursting out of the container or anything like that. I think it was just because I was repotting all those others that I was thinking that I should repot it. What I think I will do here is just top dress this. So I'm going to scoop out some of the surface soil and then come over with some fresh mix and work that in and that way some more nutrient can be in there for the plant and liven this mix up some but i won't have to actually disturb the root mass there we go it's gonna put it into a pot or something but this works too i just carry it on the shovel that's not going anywhere 
famous last words. Try not to drop this. There we go. And just put some of that on there. I'll put a whole bunch on there. Actually, more than is necessary. May have gone overboard with that, but I want to be able to easily work that in to the top of the soil. Use my fingers and blend in some of the old mix with this new mix. And I'm just going to assume that when I water this in, there's going to be some soil that washes out. But yeah, I think that this is probably the better move overall. Just try and work a fresh blend in on top. Like I said, with the ficus in general, but especially the elasticas, they don't like their roots to be messed with all that much. So I think that'll be okay. I don't think the stems are too far buried. They should be fine like that. Only because, kind of like I was saying with that epidendron, uh, it's a nice airy mix. It's a good breathable soil. So it's not like it's going to hold a ton of moisture around the stems of that plant. Let's look at the Tahitian flame. Look at it. Okay, it looked better a couple days ago. It had its full glory <laughs> while the hurricane was blown over. And when I say the hurricane, it was just the bands. We didn't have anything severe here in St. Louis. It was a few days of rain. It wasn't even that bad, but I, I had to look at it through the window to appreciate it. I love this flower so much. And something I didn't get to talk about during the garden tour because I hadn't noticed it is that this thing smells amazing, which I was not expecting at all. Not one bit. Usually, if they're of the coccinium type hedicheums, not a ton of fragrance, at least none of the ones that I've grown. And this has coccinium in it, and then obviously something else, maybe some flavum or gardenier. No, probably not that, but it smells very nice. You can see it's starting to wither away. I've been debating maybe taking this one and having it rub up against it and, you know, have some lovey time with one of the flaming torches because those are really nice vigorous plants and then you can take the seeds and just, just see what happens. It's not going to hurt. Pop a few of these flowers. Although, wait, are you a flaming torch? I don't know if that one actually is a flaming torch. I really cannot remember where that particular hedicium came from, but it's a little bit more pink than the flaming torches over here. Do you have any fresh flowers? You want to get them when they are totally fresh. This doesn't really matter if I'm just trying to pull from the pollen. Yeah, this one looks like it probably just opened up today. Doesn't have any swelling. So I'm just going to take this over here and rub it on the other flowers. I did a little bit of this yesterday. Not much, just a little bit. Let's get these together. There you go. Get to know each other. There we go. Just rubbing the pollens together from these guys. And go through and make sure to make heavy contact with all of them. I could, in theory, not even in theory, I definitely could just pick this whole thing up and take it over there and really just start rubbing the flower bracts together. But I'm more interested in the seed that I would get off of the Tahitian flame than whatever I would get off of the flaming torch that's down there. The flaming torch, I don't get it to seed that often. Whereas this one, well, I don't know. Maybe it will go to seed better than the flaming torch does. It's going to have to wait and find out. I probably should go grab another flower at some point. Not going to have much pollen left to work with on this one, but that's okay. I'm going to keep doing this every day until this one's done blooming. So you can see it still has some bracts up here that haven't opened up yet, right at the very tip. So tomorrow there'll be some more flowers coming out and I'll do the same thing again. You just have to remember that it's only the top half <laughs> of this uh, inflorescence. That's what this is called. Yeah, inflorescence. That's all that I will pollinate it. It's so pretty, isn't it? It's just a beautiful, beautiful ginger. And it's, gosh, this smell, it smells so good over here. I had to take a very quick break to charge my microphones. Forgot to do that yesterday. And got a few little things done while I was in the process. I got the, who are you, what, what was it? Tags right here, Chase Tree, Desert Orchid, El Nino. Well, I got that planted, the ground's still moist. So it seemed like a good time to do that. I plopped it in over here. I think that's going to be so pretty. These go, what did it say, like eight feet, something along those lines. I have the tag here, five to eight feet tall, four to six feet wide. So that'll 
fill in that little gap right there very nicely. And then they flower sporadically with these really pretty pink flower heads on them. Great plant. I love this. That was a great buy. It was like 45 bucks. And look at how big that thing is. It's a nice big plant. And it works for that area over there because the ground from right here all the way up through this hill, it's like digging in cement. It's hard to dig those holes. It was in a tiny pot, which generally that's not a good thing but uh, it worked out in my advantage. Got a nice big plant in a little pot. It wasn't really root wrapped or root bound. Only took a few minutes to get in the ground. Yeah, I mean, look at that. The thing, you know, it's taller than me. There's the container it was in. So it was a good fit for that spot. I have some, uh, I have some soil blended up over here that I've been using for repotting some plants out here. It's a very well draining, organically rich mix that I uh, think would do well for this hibiscus, where is it? Right here, this one. It keeps falling over. Gotten kind of top heavy, so it could use a repot. Have to come around here to get to it. I still need to plant the calicanthus right here. Beautiful calicanthus, love this shrub, but it's gonna go up there on the hill and I figured, I don't know, I might just wait. Just wait a few weeks. <laughs> right now the area's <laughs> not all that easy to navigate with the tropicals everywhere. In a couple weeks, most of those will be gone. It'd be a lot easier to get up there and to direct water to it when it's been planted. There's a good shady spot up there. I I don't like it underneath this tree. I don't think that this spot will work for it because the maple's gonna lose its leaves in the winter time and it takes a while to really fill back out and put much shade over here. That's something I forgot to talk about with the shade garden is that I've been trying to pick out plants that come up mid-season in the springtime and not too terribly early. Then the evergreens that are over here, I'm just, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> because, you know, they don't have the shade of the tree during the winter time. So that's something I'm going to have to figure out. Neither here nor there. Problems for another day. Here's the hibiscus. Get this out of here. <laughs> you guys still with me? Needed both hands for this one. There we go. You going to stand up? Yeah. Yeah, so not much growth been coming out of this one. And that's not normal for these. These are very, very, very vigorous growers. I have been managing to get lots of growth out of the stem on it. I do, I cut it back frequently because I wanted this to get a really nice, cute trunk on it. Uh, but still, it should have grown more this year. I was supposed to remove that string this spring and I completely forgot about it. Oops, it'll be okay. I'm just gonna lightly drag over that and that should pop off on its own. Doesn't even need a stake in it. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oops. That's not great. Can you see it? I can't see my camera. Yep, there's a there's a stake right inside there. I, It's probably fine. It's organic, it'll be okay, right? Can at least get the old piece of string off of there because you don't want to have that get squeezed into there. Collar the trunk. Um, yeah, that. It's not great, but since it's bamboo, I'm not that concerned about it. If it were something metal, that would be worse. I do think I need to try and cut that as low down as I can because eventually this, this trunk is gonna try and grow around it. You can already see sort of where it's starting to do that. That's not good. Okay, good news. I barely touched it and the whole thing just broke because it was starting to rot off down inside there. So that's good. I do need to keep an eye on this root right here, right? Don't want that to keep moving in too much of a circular motion but it looks like it's going out and branching down and going in different directions. So I think that's okay. Actually, I like the way that looks. I think it looks really neat when the roots do stuff like that. So with this hibiscus, I already came in, I pruned out some of the lower growth because I want pretty much everything up top and still cut that one out of there. It doesn't need to go into a bigger pot necessarily, but it does need some fresh soil. So to do that, it, well, this is actually, I'm going to do this the real easy way. When it plants this far down the container, you just take the whole thing out. I'm just going to pull that out and set it down for a second. Just drop that over here momentarily. You can see roots looking good. It's not exactly root bound. I definitely wouldn't say. This is the cheater's way, but only because I would prefer to do a full repot on this in the spring and not right now. So I'm going to make sure that there's some fresh soil down there in the bottom of the container and it can put some roots down into that. That's gonna help hold on to some moisture. Probably I'd say, I don't know, I'll get about three inches in there. 
because you saw there's a really big gap at the top of this container. So there's room for a good amount of soil. This is a nice sandy blend, so I feel like it's going to be pretty homogenous with what this hibiscus already has. Should be. Grab our hibiscus here, have a look at the bottom. Looks okay, not seeing any swirling. Yeah, you see? Look at that. And then I can just fill in around there and it's basically the same thing as a repot. It is the same thing as a repot. It's gonna have fresh soil, the bottom, the top, and all the way around. Eh, that'll work. And I didn't have to go around and try and find a new container for it. There we go, okay. Much better. This is fully saturated. It was draining really, really well. I just went ahead and hit it with the root stimulator. So I'm hoping that it just needs to burp. It needs to burp because this is a very well-drained mix. So it should be draining faster than this. But also I haven't seen the water come out the bottom yet. So I think that the soil's still soaking it up. Yeah, there we go. All right, just had to give it a little wiggle. That's better. That's gonna make this plant much less maintenance this winter. And I, like I said, I'm so glad I didn't have to go find a new pot to put it in. That worked out really well more weight in there so it's less likely to fall over i could root these but i don't i don't i don't want to I, whenever i prune a hibiscus people ask me if you could root them yeah you could root them i just i don't need them i don't need any more of them i got enough stuff out here to take care of on that note actually i need to water so i'm gonna water it and then we'll pick up some other time and do something else i don't know what oh look at the pothos y'all remember this one the Silver Street Pothos, you haven't seen it in a while, I keep it inside in the kitchen. You have to have just the right lighting to get to see the sheen on it. In person, you can see it. You can kind of, sort of see that in there, that stripage. There's like very subtle silver striping in there. Excellent plant. I think I've watered this maybe, this is probably the fourth time. It doesn't get watered very often. It's been a very, very, very low maintenance plant. Right now, I'm just giving it a little soak and the cash pot, probably for like an hour. I think that should do the trick. It was starting to get some crispiness on it and see how the leaves are kind of cupped down and inward that, and it just, it felt very light, like you could tell. It's a thirsty plant, needed a good drink. Hello, pumpkin, how you doing, pumpkin? Did you go, pumpkin? Been keeping it over here in the corner of this desk, so it's just like a lighting idea. You can see there's, it's not much. I don't think that that light up there does pretty much anything for it. It's just, it's been sturdy, but a really easy plant. Very easy. This guy, oh, Colby. I had him outside yesterday. It took me 45 minutes to find him. He had found a new corner, a new spot. He has usual areas he goes to. Oh, yesterday, he found something new. It took a walk. It's amazing. Amazing. I keep cutting myself off, but he blends in with things so well. They're so good at camouflaging. Oh, we've got some new packages. I'm excited about these. I've been looking forward to these. I can't wait to open these up. I'm gonna turn the nature channel on for the animals. <laughs> Go outside and pop those open. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that cute? Little rocking chair planter. That's not what was in the boxes over there. It's just deviating, cause you know, morning. Brain still. <laughs> setting up kind of like how i just paused right there because i wasn't sure if i was recording yeah that's a uh, similar to a planter that i got last year that's just a little smiley face pot on a swing that's still in the growth space i got that actually as a gift for someone so i need to get a plant to put in the top of it i think it's fun that's kind of cute a plant's gonna love being in something where it can be rocked back and forth right it has a drainage hole and some tape I need to take the tape out of there that'll pop open the plug that's in there uh the pots yeah that's what's in these boxes got a couple really cool pots over here I realized i never gave any kind of transition the stuff in the kitchen with the plant it's morning the next day i had a friend come over with their five-year-old yesterday we had a good time walking around cutting flowers <laughs> she uh, really liked the heliconias i said hey look this is what hummingbirds drink out of and then I cut her a piece and she thought it was like a magic wand. Went through quite a few of those. Oh, I don't even need the box cutter for this one. Oh, yes I do. That's a box inside of a box. I'm sure they have their reasons for that, but it seems really wasteful, especially because this box feels much, much, much more sturdy than the one that it was in over there. I guess that's not really all that important. I hope this is decent quality for the cost. These were not very cheap kind of dirty but that's pretty cool looking 
Is that a scratch? We got, no, nope, not a scratch, just a hair. Yeah, okay, it's dusty, but beautiful. Isn't that a beautiful pot? Something you can have sitting out, whether you have anything in it or not, it looks kind of, you know, like a little art piece. Okay, and the next one, I try to not make horrible, horrible styrofoam sounds here before I open this up. You're gonna love it, it's so cool, I think. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, it's the same as the other one. Oh, except, has a little drain screen to go on it, and it's bigger, much bigger. The other one may have had a screen too. I didn't see it. I'll have another look in the box. Sure did. It's right there. Just so excited about the pot. Didn't even see it. Ugh, these are cute. Really like these. They need a rinse because they're dusty. I don't remember what these are called, but I'll have them linked down below or I'll pop it up here on the screen. Actually, I was browsing Amazon for just some smaller containers. And uh, it did the thing where it suggested something really cool and then I got sucked into it. Actually, I didn't get sucked into it. I was like, hey, that's really pretty. And then I saw that it was $80 and it was like, oh, no, 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 not that pretty. Don't like it $80 much, that's for sure. But then it had the little box with the coupon on it. They were 50% off. I don't see that on stuff on Amazon that often. You get, you know, $10 sometimes, maybe $3, 10%. 50%, that doesn't happen very often. So I was like, well, I do $40 like the container. <laughs> so I did the, here it is. I got this one, that's the 12 inch, and then the 10 inch, which, you know, the size on them is kind of different. They're not round, right? It's a nice big oblong planter. So you can do some cool stuff with a container like this. Like with this one, or the other one too, I think it'd be easier with this one though. I would like to uh, put maybe a smaller anthurium in here. You know, it's a pretty, like, probably a pink flowered one and have it mounted up with moss covering the soil. Maybe wrap some um, spider wood to just sort of make it look like there's roots coming out of it and have that coming up and out the top. Just one plant that's smaller for the container off center with the nice green moss across the rest of it. I think that would look really cool. Or even a bonsai, that would look nice. Coming out the top, all kinds of options. And uh, it, it's, okay, technically an impulse buy, but when it's on clearance, is that a bad thing? Of course it's a bad thing. That's how hoarding happens. Hey, Kitten, <laughs> what's up with you? Oh God, I love the stalker floof. She is so cute. I'm wondering if I should maybe put a clear coat on these just because I don't like the way everything is sticking to them. All the dust that's outside, like they're just, I think it's gonna drive me crazy trying to keep these clean. And it looks like they do scratch fairly easily also. I wish that they had taken the paint all the way down on the inside, just in case you would wanna use this as a decorative bowl of some kind. But I, you still could, I just think it, you'd have to really have this thing filled up all the way. Otherwise you'd be seeing that glaze in there. Otherwise, I do really like them. I just not a fan of how every single particle seems to be attracted to the outside, whatever coating they have on them. Should I clear coat them? It wouldn't be that hard to do. You don't always know how that's going to react. I don't know what these are painted with, right? So I could go over it with a clear coat, probably just a spray on, and that may end up having an odd texture to it, or it could even dissolve the paint that's underneath it if they aren't compatible with each other, and it would make them very shiny. Which, I mean, I like shine, but I kind of like these more muted and matte as it is. So I, maybe I won't do that. I don't know, it's just something that I'm, I'm gonna think about. What I would love to do with this, just like pipe dream here. This isn't going to happen. No way it's going to happen. But to fill the entire top of this thing with the Fire Flash Heliconias. That's a Heliconia that basically doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it does somewhere. I'm sure some people still have them around. I haven't seen them for sale in, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Last place they had them was Tejas Tropicals, and they were in Tejas, Texas, I think. No, Louisiana. I don't remember where they were. But uh, they sold lots and lots of heliconias. And it wasn't just rhizomes. Like, they actually shipped you the plants. They were fantastic. And they retired and then turned into, like, a chicken farm or something. I, I don't know what the history there was. They sold them 
And uh, I first saw them when I was a kid at HQ, which I believe got bought out by Home Depot. But they're, it's, it just looks like a Sideracorum Heliconia. The paired speaks it out. They look like a Chaconiana, but they only get a foot tall. So you just have like one foot tall green Heliconia upright you know, growth with the little tiny mini Heliconias on top. They're so stinking cute and very prolific too. I don't understand why they're not around anymore because they're just so cool. And this is a tiny little miniature bird of paradise got to be one of the coolest plants that I would want to have around. You could fill in the bottoms of your containers with them and not have, you know, giant heliconias growing around everything, but you still have the little inflorescence that sticks up, that nice shiny waxy heliconia inflorescence that just love to have around. It attracts the hummingbirds big time and it just looks cool. It looks like tiny little false bird of paradise all over the place, but none of that matters. That was the wrong zoom. It, uh, I can't find them. I haven't seen them for sale in years. And I think I may have seen them on Etsy a couple of years ago, but I don't think they were actually the right plant. Like they were calling them the Fire Flash, which I'm not even positive that's what it was called. It's been so long. That would be neat. It sounds like I'm talking about a mythical unicorn plant here, because I basically am. That would be really beautiful, having that just slightly mounted up with some moss along the edge and then just a whole flat of those with the orange flowers on top of them. That'd be beautiful. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I do need to run some errands. I have to drop off some donation stuff and then go to Home Depot and get pool salt. And since we're going to be at Home Depot, may as well check out the plants. I doubt they'll have much. I have not been impressed by anything at Home Depot or Lowe's at all this year as far as the house plants are concerned. But may as well poke around and see if there's something that might look good in these or in the little rocking chair planter and you know, I don't know, haven't been out into a store in a long time. Like I said, I wouldn't expect them to have much, but you never know. I'm guessing it's supposed to be mums and kale and like corn stalks and stuff I would rather not see. Things that I don't want in my life. These things I don't want in my life until it's cold outside. You still have a couple more weeks. I'm not doing the fall yet. I haven't fallen. I'm not doing fall yet. Well, I stand corrected. There's more outside. Look at that. There's some variety. Just kidding. It's pretty much all mums. All right, things are better on the inside. Trees and shrubs, all 50% off. I'm gonna need a bigger cart. No, actually, what I'm gonna need is self-control. That's what I'm really gonna need. What's that gardenia? What are these over here if the trees and shrubs is, and here's a perennial? Doesn't say what kind. It's very important <laughs> when you don't live someplace where they're fully hardy that it says what kind. Just says gardenia. Also, they stink. Is that these? No, something over here stinks. It smells like skunk would not be a good time to be planting gardenia anyways. Look at the shrubs though. Like the nice little mugos that apparently are not 50% off. That's confusing. The boxwoods, these are wonky but salvageable. No, actually, oh no, that's that's rooted in there like that. Never mind. What happened to you guys? Everybody's leaning. They're trying to get away from something. Some fat alberts. Little. Very little, but they're nice and girthy. Have a nice root mass on them. Look the limelights are so pretty. This is not a limelight. This is one of these guys over here, which is, I think, like a berry, strawberry, something similar to strawberry vanilla. Berry white. Oh, berry white. That's a fun name for it. Really nice pink color on that. That's really pretty. I like that a lot. Like, a lot. Look at those. This has some really great color on them. I have no idea where I would put them but I feel like it's something that would be worth figuring out, especially for 50% off, right? Look at these over here. So you can see how they age into the pink. But I imagine, yeah, you can look at the rest of them, all white, and then they get that nice pink. It's a deeper pink than the strawberry vanillas that I have. All right, what are your stats? How big do you get? Six to seven by four by five. That's a good size. It's a really good size. Let me see the picture. That's a nice picture too, huh? So, 35, so like 17 50 a piece. Well, that's tempting. <laughs> you know, I mean, business about the plants keep everything loaded up right here. Save room on the rest of the cart for some other fun stuff. These are a nice size on the Hixie eyes. I gotta talk loud, that music's really obnoxious. I don't think, I actually think that I'm good on these. I think everything's all filled in. Lots of nice looking alocasias. Some Laratas. 
back down to their normal price, what they should be, 30 bucks for about four foot tall ones. They're nice. They all look good. It's just, it's not time. I can't do it. There's too many plants as it is. I'm in that mode where I'm trying to stick with stuff that I really like and really want, can't go impulse buying things as I'm prepared to load my cart up with a bunch of hydrangeas that I had not planned on getting. Oh, and they have the fire lights too. That's a proven winner's one. They have really big petals on them. Firelight's supposed to be kind of like the Prime, but stays smaller, right? Oh, six to eight feet. Well, that's not that much smaller. <laughs> Look at the color on that. Really big petals. So with a lot of the panicle type hydrangeas, which is pretty much all we're seeing here, you can see the flowers are really small. They're really big. Nice big clusters. I like those. Okay, I'm gonna figure out what to do here because those firelights throw a little wrench in my unplanned plan here because I do like them both, but it would not make sense to get both. I feel like they would really clash. I don't know if I care about that though, because this is such a good price and they're already a decent size. Next year, they'll put on at least 50% of the size that they're at. And I could plant up like a, just a huge wall of those up on the hill. And it would add a lot of privacy. Panicles flush out nice and early in the season with their foliage. So they'd only be dormant, you know, for a few months. What I like about this one is the stem has some good color on it. Like there's hints of red in there. It's a nice deep, almost mahogany tone to the stem. And the firelight, Eh, not so much, but I like them both. This one's just a more saturated color, whereas this is a more large, impressive bloom. Not a lot to show as far as the house plants go. It's your pretty typical stuff. There's only again some, I guess, more specialized things, you know. There's a nice variegated epiprenum over here. Oops, sorry, Monstera, Monstera copra. Looks nice. I like the color on that. That's a interesting aglaonema. I'm used to seeing the bitac or whatever they're called. That's not gonna say. They're all saying assorted, but this one is like blue. It's a really good color. Oh, jackpot. I was disappointed. There were only a few anthuriums up there and they weren't looking great. But down here, there's a ton to choose from. Would you just hold still? Please hold still. <laughs> Multitasking here. These look pretty good. Colors aren't very saturated. And we've got just a pretty white assortment. Oh, well, nice to have options. Holy crap, that startled the crud out of me. I was so zoned in on the plants, I didn't even realize there was Christmas stuff everywhere. And here I was thinking that I'd have to avoid the fall stuff. No, nope, it's Christmas. They got Christmas stuff all over the place. I'm not ready for it. Not looking at it. Oh, they've got some little. Ficus over there, it's the Lassicas. Looks like probably Ruby and Tanicki. Hanging baskets look okay. There's a new Pothos out I've been keeping my eyes peeled for. Haven't seen it yet though. What kind of Pothos are you? Kind of plain looking, but just. I think it's just a golden Pothos that they for some reason put in with the trending plants. Aww. Love a cat palm. Cat palms have a nice structure to them. Spider mite magnets, though. Don't like having them inside. Seba Blues. Love them. They're great. Super long lived. What are you? Are you a Tanicki? A Ruby? No, that's not, doesn't say. This one just, oh, sorry. Chroma Belize. Right. Gotta put your own name on these things. Guess it has a little bit more pink than a Ruby and a Tanicki. I don't know what kind of bird that is, but it sounds very pretty. Yeah, I'm home, but obviously. It's very loud, noisy bird. I grabbed this beautiful black rabbit's foot fern because I was thinking, hey, that would look cool in one of these pots with those nice fuzzy roots growing over the edge. But, what, do <laughs> you see the problem here? That didn't make any sense. You can't even see the pot because, you know, it's. Oh, nice and droopy, which is a good thing. It's a nice, healthy fern, but uh, this needs to go into something taller and more upright. And I don't mind having the fern itself. That was kind of why I got it, because I figured, hey, I'm either gonna like it in this pot, and if not, I'm just gonna like having it. I love a rabbit's foot fern. In fact, I still have the one that I used in a video about rabbit's foot ferns five years ago, probably long time ago. They're very easy, long-lived ferns. That's like my top recommendation fern for people who struggle with them. Try a rabbit's foot. Oh yeah, and it's, 
it doesn't really show on camera that much. It's just going to look grainy, but it's actually, it's getting fairly dark outside. So sorry, mostly about how things are going to be grainy. Not that grainy. This camera's pretty decent in the low light. And then a blue star fern, just because they're one of my favorites. I don't see them that often. Price was good. And I thought, hey, that would actually be a nice color, I think, to go together in this pot. And it's going to do essentially what I was talking about with that mythical heliconia, in that it will run across this entire top and fill it in. And the surface of their roots, when they start to get bigger, are actually kind of cool to look at. Let me get in here so you can see them. See that they have really fuzzy runners, similar to the rabbit's foot fern, as far as, you know, just being fuzzy going. And it's just a nice color, too. I think that's a nice pairing, that sort of bluish, glaucous gray. Glaucous, glaucous, how do you say that word? It, it looks good. That's, that's the whole point there. I like the way those go together. So that might be a good pairing, especially because I do want whatever goes in at least one of these to be a more simple, low-maintenance plant. One of them I'd like to do up very nice and do something fun with. The other one I just want to be pretty easy. And both of these ferns, very simple ferns. The Blue Star Fern, oh, that was a loud, abrasive sound. I think there's sand on the table from another thing I was doing out here. These like really bright, indirect light, and their ferns, they do prefer things to stay consistently moist, but they can dry out quite a bit more than other ferns can. That's another reason that I like the rabbit foot fern. That's back there, the rabbit's foot fern, because they have more forgiveness, <laughs> right? It's not like some ferns like Boston ferns and the lemon button, pretty much any of the nephrolepes ferns that you see for sale, where uh, they can actually dry out and they'll be okay like that. But if there's too much moisture, they don't like to shift around a lot. That's what I'm trying to say. Between moist to dry to moist to dry, you either need to keep them consistently moist or keep them like halfway. But if you let them dry out and then water them and do that several times, they start to drop all their little pinnae, their little their leaflets all over the place. And they get really messy. Uh, Boston fern would actually be fine for one of these because like I said, they can go more on the dry side as long as you have the humidity, but uh, they droop and they hang. So I don't know, just color wise, I thought that these would be a good pairing. And I love blue star fern. They smell really good. I know a lot of people don't know what I'm talking about, but these and the kangaroo paw ferns, they have like a sweet kind of vanilla scent to them in the evening. That's really nice. So that's a plant that I think would be good in the house. Like I said, I just think these colors go well together. The more light they get, the more of that kind of bluish color they're going to get to them. Because it's not very bright out right now, it's harder to even see what I'm talking about. But well, let's call it a blue star fern for a reason, right? Because they have a bluish color to them. You can cut, okay, there we go, there's an angle. You see it, right? You know what I'm talking about? Just believe me, it's blue. That's, doesn't that look blue to you? Ish? All right, gray, whatever. <laughs> Just the point. I think that looks nice in there. It's probably what I'll do for that one. Like I said, I wanted the smaller pot to be something more simple that just needs bright indirect light and an occasional watering. And uh, that's going to go on a shelf somewhere. Plants that go on shelves, I don't want them to be things that need to be watered all the time. The larger one, which is the one that leans itself towards more creativity, that's why I wanted the anthuriums for. Now, I got two just because I really liked them. <laughs> I'm not going to put two in here. I just, I wanted another one because I was having trouble deciding between these two right here and I was pressed for time and I said, you know what, go ahead and just get both of them because they're long-lived plants and you're gonna enjoy having them both around. I don't have a name on these. They never give a variety, especially from a big box store, but you know, it's a fairly hot pink flower on them with a really pretty spathe. That's what we all about the anthurium, right? It's that really big spathe. And I think that having one of these in there, like I was talking about when I unbox these, mounted up high with a whole bunch of green moss and some sticks, maybe a nice rock or something in there, I think that'll look really cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm not going to do that now. It's not happening in this video. You guys are just here for the fun planning part in my brain. The creative juices part of everything, but I don't have all the materials right now. I have a bunch of moss, but it just doesn't have a lot of green left in it. I like for that to be a really nice, rich green when I plant it up. But these are the new plants. That's, you know, the more exciting part. Get to see some things, get to talk about them. And thuriums are fun because they have the really nice long wood flowers on them. Pretty simple house plants for the most part. Only question I usually ever get from people is why they aren't flowering for them. And 
generally this just means you need to fertilize them and make sure they have enough sun. One and or the other. Both, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Not one and or the other, that didn't make any sense. Uh, but otherwise, simple. So bloom all year round, as long as you're getting proper light, they're staying consistently moist, and uh, you know, you gotta fertilize them. Sometimes they just need a little extra kick from some fertilizer to get them going. Oh, and I also, I got some, some shrubs. Aren't they beautiful? Look at all that color. I went ahead and I went with the berry whites. That was the name on these, right? Berry white, but berry spelled like, you know, strawberry. Because the more I looked at the fire lights, which I really did like, I liked the bigger flower on them. They were reminding me an awful lot of the strawberry vanillas and the ones that were aging out more. Not necessarily with the brown crispy one, but that more of a mauvey pink. Whereas these, I've already seen that these are aging out and holding onto their color better. And that's what I would like to see. I like this color palette better than what I was seeing on the firelight. These are really nice big shrubs too. I'm gonna say they're probably, with the container, of course, about four feet high. Lots of growth down on the inside of them. The firelights that they had just weren't looking as hot. And uh, they had these, well, have had these throughout the drought. And they're still looking pretty good. Whereas the fire lights, some of those weren't looking too hot. So that was another thing is I wanted to gauge them on, are they going to turn into toasted marshmallows? Like my strawberry vanilla down there, if it gets really hot outside. And these are sitting out in the open in the pavement at Home Depot where, you know, I mean, the plants don't always look the best at the big box stores and the flowers still look pretty good on them. So I think that that's a good sign. Look at how beautiful it is. That's so pretty. I only got four, which is plenty. I was wanted to get six, but given they go about six feet wide at maturity, that just didn't seem necessary. You know, I have so many options. Look at how empty this garden is. There's so much space for more shrubbery, right? No, these are for the, oh, you guys. Look at the, oh, well. Okay, that was my fault. They, I thought that was cute. These two, they've been so cute and snuggly. Hey, Tobes, you gonna say hi to everybody? Hi, Toby. Hey, Toby. You don't know where I am. Gotta love an old dog. The hydrangeas, panicle hydrangeas. I've wanted to put a whole bunch over here on the slope of this hill. And they're gonna end up being somewhat blocked, but I feel like when they're, you know, full grown, it's gonna be hard to miss them. So from this point and down and over to just the top of that slope and have that fun back corner of color over there. And I love the panicle hydrangeas because I think, I'm pretty sure I talked about this at the store, they start to flush out early in the season. So it's not like some things, you know, like the mimosa tree. Love the mimosa, the thing thing. It doesn't put out any leaves until, I don't know, mid-May is ideal, but the last couple of years it's been more like June. I don't want to wait till June <laughs> for the plants to have leaves on them. So the reason I love the heptacodium over here Heptacodium flushes out with foliage very early. So it can be by probably mid-March, even into early March, actually, that this thing is fully flushed out, has all its leaves on it, while everything outside is still bare and just looking like sticks. You know, that so helps add some life to things. It'd be nice to always have lots of evergreens, but there are only so many options. And just by having some plants that flush out early and hold onto their foliage long into the end of the season, you get a similar effect. So the heptacodium, it generally is only without foliage from like late December. It didn't really defoliate until mid-January last year because we had a very mild fall. But typically it'd be about mid to late December and then it starts flushing back out in late February, March. So it's only without leaves for a few months. While not evergreen, it's like 80 to 90% <laughs> green, right? And the panicle hydrangeas, similar thing. So they flush out nice and early. They hold onto their foliage for a long time. They have the beautiful old panicles of flowers that dry out on them for the rest of the year. I think that'll look really nice over there. And it's a more ideal time to plant them too. Moving into the fall, I really like to plant the hydrangeas in the fall because when you plant a hydrangea in the, it's generally mid spring to summer around here is when they start selling them. At least it's the panicle hydrangeas. They're already grown out somewhat because you know, they've been at a nursery where Generally, things are warmer than they are here. They're ahead, which is great, but they're starting to set bud. And with the panicle hydrangeas, let me come back over here without making y'all dizzy. With the panicle hydrangeas, once they start to set bud, so as soon as you see these, these little spikes coming out on them, 
that means they're done. No more growth. They're done growing for the year. They're focusing everything on flowering. So if you get them in the mid-spring, early summer, then they have flowers on them. That's it. That's all you're getting that year. You're just going to have flowers. One thing you can do to avoid that happening is go ahead and plant them and cut them back by about 50%. They'll be fine. It's okay. You may sacrifice some flowers for the year depending on when it is. But if it's before June, that should be fine to go ahead and give them that cut back. They should still be able to flush out and put out some flowers for you. The main thing is that they're going to fill back out more. It'll help get the roots moving underground, send that oxen back down into the roots that they'll spread out, and then they'll put up a whole bunch more growth. And it doesn't have to be 50%. Really, you can just like a 25% trim it doesn't have to be drastic but the main thing is that you're going to give them a cut and then they'll go ahead and put out even more growth on top of what's in there as opposed to just sitting around size wise and then flowering for you oh for example that's what happened over here this would be very grainy this limelight prime love it it's a beautiful hydrangea tree but only got like maybe two inches of growth out of it because it was ready to start flowering when i bought it so it was done with its growing for the year and it was ready to do the flowering thing. Had I gone in and pruned it, then it would have gone ahead and put out some growth and then flowered. So, you know, you just have to decide what you want there. You're going to delay some flowering to have a bigger plant or just go ahead and wait until next year and give them their late winter cut back and let them do their thing then. It doesn't, there's no wrong decision here. I just thought I'd talk. I don't, why did I even get on that? I was talking about the Right, the show of flowers. It's going to be lots of flowers. It's going to be so pretty. <laughs> and it's nice planting them this time of year because I don't need to worry about whether or not I should go ahead and cut them back to allow them to put out some more growth. So I'll put them in the ground. They're going to look the way they look this year and then give them a prune in the late winter. And then they should put on a good amount of height next year. They take off. It's not like some shrubs, most shrubs, where, you know, you have like the three-year establishment rule with well this is not necessarily true some of the smaller hydrangeas i have noticed like the firelight tidbit i have those they took a few years to do anything but typically the larger types of panicle hydrangeas they start growing pretty quickly for you so it's not going to be a really long time to wait for them to establish themselves and start to look really nice it's so dark over here i hesitate to spend too much time talking about the area but uh really all that's left to say is that while things are going to be somewhat blocked for a while, this is a red bud right here. It's a Carolina, sweetheart Caroline variegated red bud. The variegation is most only there when it's cool outside, but it's still fairly young. When that gets a few feet taller, I'll be able to come in and prune out the inside and then be able to see through it again. And then it will make more sense to have those hydrangeas there, which I think will look really nice. You'll be able to see the espalier apples that are back there again, which is right now it's at an awkward size. So. Yeah, no. Thinking long term, though. Have the uh, desert orchid over there. I'd like to get a few evergreens to put over into this spot and then get those hydrangeas up there and probably mulch that hill and just kind of finish off that garden area. Well, not finish it off. <laughs> you know how that goes. Never finish when it comes to the garden beds. But yeah, to liven things up, get some more color over there. It's really getting dark out. I should probably shut up now. Yeah, definitely time to go. Okay. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. I'm going to link some charities, whatever I can find, down in the description for hurricane relief. Uh, it's pretty bad right now. And you know, when I started this video, didn't know. You know, the hurricane had just dropped some rain over us, and then a couple of days passed. The news wasn't talking much about it for the first couple of days because well, apparently because everything was underwater, so they couldn't get cameras in. But it, as of today, it's looking like it's just absolutely horrible in lots of different areas, Tennessee, North Carolina, Florida, it's parts of Georgia. I think the best thing to do would be to just link a whole bunch of charities in the description and for you guys to comment groups that you think that would be beneficial to people and different ways people can help and, and can all talk about things that way. Yeah. Gardening community is pretty strong, so any charities groups, foundations, whatever you have that you think would be helpful to people, personal help that you may need, put it down in the comment section. I will, I can only pin one comment at a time, so I guess we just need to make sure to like the comments. <laughs> Everybody go through the comments and like the ones that have uh, the names of some groups or things people can do to help. All the suggestions are really helpful. I don't think, yeah, you can't put links in the description, so don't try and copy and paste the link because it'll get sent off to spam 
So just type out the name and everybody else, you know, we just know how to Google it. Just gonna have to Google it. Or I will then Google it and put it in the description of the video so you can click on it. Just write that, you know where the description is? Just click underneath the video, it's down there. Like I said, hope everybody's doing well and that everybody's safe. And I'm sorry to everybody who's not doing well. I know things are really horrible right now. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Oh, where are you going? Bye-bye.